Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built. And in this episode, I'm going to do something about the non cancelling indicators on the 986 and 996 Porsches. Okay, so many of you have seen that I bought uh, my 996, uh, affectionately known as Archie, uh, and I've been gradually tidying it up along the way. And there's been a few bits and pieces that have just sort of really irked me about the car that, that just aren't working the way they're supposed to. And it's quite annoying. And one of those main things is that the indicators don't cancel when you uh, turn a corner. So basically you turn the indicator on, you turn a corner, as you turn back, it does not cancel. And apparently that is a quite a common problem. It basically happens to all of them. It seems to be a bit of a manufacturing fault. And the main fix generally tends to be uh, replacing this whole unit and one of my viewers actually did that and uh, saw that I was having the issue and I've been doing a little bit of research and I think there may be a way to actually repair your existing unit to uh, get it to work so um, um, sorry I've forgotten the, the name of the uh, the guy who sent it to me but uh, I'm quite grateful that he sent me his old damaged unit so I'm actually going to have a, uh, a tinker with this one and we'll see if we can actually pull it apart and get it to work again without having to go out and spend $600 or whatever it costs to get a whole new uh, unit to replace the one in the car, just because the indicators don't cancel. All right, so the very first thing I need to do to try and repair this unit is to open it up. So uh, there's a bunch of these on the face here. Uh, there's a bunch of these little sort of uh, brass uh, rivets that I need to just lightly drill out the top of them so that I can just lift the face off. So that is my first job. Okay, so I, uh, I tried to drill out those little rivets and the trouble was is that as soon as I put a drill on them, they just spin in their spot. So I ended up using uh, just a little uh, Dremel tool um, and I just ground the top of it off, uh, of, of each of them, and then I could just uh, lift the cover off, and I poked the rivets down through, uh, through inside these, uh, these holes, and I can rivet this back on again later, just with a standard pop rivet gun. Um, so um, once I've pulled it apart, you can actually see what the issue is here. This piece here, this is, this is the issue. This should actually be sitting sort of square, if you can see this, uh, these, these arms, this arm is leaning in, is because this little piece here, which was still in, the, um, uh, in with the pack, broke off. You can actually see on this side of this one here, it's already snapped through. This little piece has already snapped through because there's a fair bit of force on these. For some reason, they're, um, they're sort of spaced off of the sides of this. And from what I gather, it's a simple matter of just gluing these back on again and I should be able to get this thing to function the way it's supposed to. So um, if I can just sort of reinforce it all, glue it all back together, and instead of throwing this out and spending hundreds of dollars on this, it should cost me, hopefully, a couple of dollars in glue. So I just removed the spring, and the other side fell off as well. So I've got my bare unit here, and I've still got my two little pieces that are missing, so hopefully if you pull yours off, hopefully these are still sort of hidden in amongst the um, stuff, so don't throw them away. You, uh, these things will make it a lot easier. Now it's just a matter of trying to uh, glue them back into place. Okay, so all I actually did was I just cleaned up the surfaces on uh, either side where it was joined and used a bit of super glue. Basically, for some reason, these things sort of look like they're sort of made with a, um, a gap around the side, so they were supposed to sort of be spring-loaded. The trouble is, is that the, um, the spring on this holds them tight anyway, so they don't have any room to move. So uh, I've just glued them fixed to the sides of the unit, and hopefully... Um, once that all dries up, that should hold it exactly where it's supposed to be. But what I might actually do to get a little bit more reinforcement is I'm gonna go and try and find a little area of this, uh, this unit where I can trim off some of the bits of the exact same plastic 
and feed them into some of the holes and just sort of bulk it all up and give it a bit more reinforcing just using the same type of plastic. And um, as I have no idea what this is and I don't know much about plastic, so um, what I often do when I'm trying to repair plastic is I just sort of look for a, um, uh, a molding piece, just carve a little bit off, there's your plastic that's exactly the same. All right, so I've gone through, I've used uh, a fair bit of glue and uh, lots of sort of bits I've uh, trimmed off and poked into the gaps underneath. Basically just trying to give it some oomph. Hopefully that will be enough to uh, sort of give it some structure there. Let's uh, give the super glue a little bit of time to completely cure and then we're gonna try and fit the spring again and just see how robust it really has come out. All right, that's been probably a couple of hours now and that's all set up and it's nice and solid, nice and hard. Uh, that feels quite firm. I don't think I'm going to have too much issue with it breaking again, hopefully. So uh, now it's time to reassemble by just adding the spring back in. Um, so I'll just clip the spring on and uh, we'll see if we can put it all back together. All right, super glue is a no-go. It's definitely not strong enough. It just shattered in my hands. So um, I'm gonna try some of the uh, five minute epoxy and just see if that does the job because uh, super glue does not work. The principle in fixing it is sound. It's just a matter of getting the right stuff to glue it together again. So. Let's give that time to set up now. Hopefully we have it sorted. All right, round two with the epoxy looks better. It feels a bit more solid, but uh, <laughs> time will tell. Let's uh, try and reassemble it again and see if it is actually solid and it's gonna work. That feels much more secure. So now you can see that this is nice and square. This uh, little uh, W-shaped wire. Uh, is sitting nice and square and level and that should hopefully be it. So now it's time to replace it all into the housing. Um, you need to be very careful about these two springs here. So these actually have some tiny little springs underneath the base of these, uh, these arms. So you need to actually sort of hold these arms down to uh, fit the indicator arm back in again. So let's see if we can get this all back together and then uh, get the cover back on, rivet it on, and hopefully it should be a working indicator. Before I uh, assemble it, I'll just add a little bit of extra white grease in around things just to uh, make sure it's all going to, you know, stay working the way it's supposed to. All right, that is really fiddly trying to get it all together to stay together while I put the, the, the springs in and everything held down, but just taking my time, I got it together. I've just uh, clamped it in, and now it's time I'm gonna go through. I've just got some uh, small pop rivets. I'm gonna go through now and pop rivet it back together where those uh, other rivets I just took out were, and uh, hopefully it should be uh, ready to put it back in the car. And there we go, it's all back together. So uh, that was actually not that difficult. It was just a matter of, um, the hardest part is really putting it back together again. And uh, the, uh, the, the five minute epoxy, that seems to be the, uh, the stuff to use. Um, now it's just time to actually put this in the car and make sure it actually does what it's supposed to. So now it's still to be repaired, it's time to uh, fit it to the car. So I assume most of you would have to do this bit first, but uh, we're just going to go through this bit now. And the first thing to uh, changing it over is to disconnect the batteries. Next step is to remove the airbag. There's two T30 Torx bits in behind either side here. So um, just uh, get in there and remove them.
airbag out, 24 mil socket to uh, break loose the, uh, the hub and loosen it off, but don't take it off completely because um, it'll save you from smashing your face into the uh, steering wheel. But then you just need to try and rock the steering wheel to make it loose. Nice and loose. Remove the nut and the washer, but mark where the steering wheel was so you can put it back on nice and straight again. Because there's nothing worse than a steering wheel that's not straight. And there's a couple of connections I just want to loosen off. So now we just uh, remove the face cover, just some sc four screws. Quick and easy. Face cover comes off. And two more screws either side. And that slides up and out. Bottom slides down and out. Unscrew here. Now we'll just mark the distance out on here. Then underneath there's just an eight mil nut. And now there's two big plugs on the back that you need to just disconnect. There's one, there's two, and then the last little plug is out. Done. We have old one out, new one back in. That simple. That was really, really quick and easy. It's taken me to get to this point 10 minutes, if that, and half of that was looking for tools. <laughs> plug it back in. And on she goes. Make sure it's nice and straight and in line with your depth that you made before. All right, that is nice. Lined up. Place this back on and screw it back in. Making sure I line back up the rubber covers on either side and slip this all back in together. Simply plug the airbag back in again, tuck the cable in. Hey. But maybe first, <laughs> bolt the steering wheel on. All right, and it's all back together again. I just need to reconnect the battery and um, test it out. Okay, and time to try it out. We have indicator on. Cancels. Right indicator. Cancels. Perfect. It works. All right, guys. Well, that was a huge win. I am really happy with how that turned out. It was quite quick and simple. Considering most people just buy like the $600 new unit that's just going to break again eventually, that's a $5 fix for some glue. I am really, really happy. So um, if you want to see more tips and tricks and videos like this, uh, make sure you uh, subscribe here uh, and follow along with Harry as well. All right, guys, that's it for this one. I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.